going today? It is so good to see you. Damn it, I'm cold. I was out last night with the Nikon Z 40mm F2 Compact Prime. It was freezing. I'm still freezing. I've got my Huffa Puffer on. I am going to show you some very first look images. I'm super excited about them. I am impressed by this little affordable lens. Now, I have to give this lens back soon. It has, it's a preview copy provided by Nikon. This video is not sponsored, it's not paid for, and they have no say in my thoughts or what I do here. Now, we happen to be shooting this very video on the 40mm f2 at f2 at 35mm at full frame, and doesn't it look nice? The Huffer Puffer comes up very nicely. Colour rendition good, sharpness good, it's all working out. But this is a little bit wider than I normally like for the in-studio look, so let's pop over to APS-C. Let's crop this 40mm and it's going to be a 60 mil field of view equivalent. Let's do it! Oh, that didn't hurt at all, like going to the dentist. Anyway, this image here is one of my favorite images. I'm gonna be showing you lots of images from the 40 millimeter that I shot last night, images and video, and I'm gonna supply a few of these raw for you to download so you can just check it out for yourself and make your own decisions. Really, that's the most important thing. I'm just sharing with you today what I think. What do I think about it? Well, let's get into it. The very first thing that I got super excited about with playing with this lens was the in-body image stabilization. And really, it just seems to be extraordinarily stable. The reason that I go and shoot at night, not only is it because I love it and I think it looks great, but it's also a really good test. It really pushes an entire photographic system as to how it can handle things handheld, in low light, what sort of results can you expect? Now, because this lens from my perspective is being sold as kind of an all-rounder lens, a street lens, a travel lens, a lens that you have on the front of the camera when maybe you're out with the family and you're not really gonna do any photography but suddenly you need to do photography, can it handle the more extreme versions of those sort of situations that you might throw at it? and shooting in super low light is one of them. So this is what I've done last night. And yes, I'm impressed. The F2 is capturing very much, almost as much light as an F1.8. And you've got a field of view which sits between 35 and 50 really, really nicely. Now join me as we jump on the computer and have a little bit of a close up look at some of these raw files and how I think the fact that this lens, which is 299, let's say that again, 299 US dollars is standing up super well to the very high end S primes that we're used to. Now, is it as good? No, but should it be for less than half the price? No. Is it half as good? No, it's way better than half as good. I would say so far, early days, 75 to 90% of the way there. And for most use cases, you might not even notice the difference. So good on you, Nikon, for delivering, I don't know, let's just go bang in the middle, something like 75 to 85% of the performance for less than half the price. But it's early days for this lens, but gosh, there's some great stuff. Let's jump out to the field. Let's look at the raw files and capture one. And let's enjoy this beautiful little lens that really anyone could or should or might have in their bag for that situation where it's absolutely perfect. Righty, well, uh, the Insta360 has crashed. I don't have time to take the battery out. So we're gonna shoot on the phone, mounted on the front of the camera. So I mount it on the front of the scooter, it's vertical, I can't get it to shoot any further up, so we're a little bit compromised. The advantage is though, I do have a tripod, which means I can do this, and I think you can probably see me. Here's the kit, I've got the Z6 with the 35mm, got the Z6 II with the 40 see how we go. Okay everybody well here's a little quick look first raw files from the 40 millimeter let's jump in and just check it out we are on the Z62 firmware version 1.2 Nikkor Z 40 millimeter f2 not s class lens but look at that that looks pretty good nicely in focus nice start to what we're doing here 
Now, I arrived at the location that I decided to shoot from. I hadn't quite finished setting up the camera and this guy came flying towards me. As you can see here, I've pushed up the exposure two and a half stops. But this just shows how the Z system can handle that sort of pushing. And this file looks fantastic. Love this shot. We're at 1 40th of a second at F2 ISO 100. And as we can see, if we go into 100%, this is looking very sharp and very good. I've only made two very minor adjustments. One for exposure and one for shadows. That's it. And look at that. Fabulous. And here we are looking from the same location up towards the last bits of light in the sky. The sun had already set. And again, we can just see that that's rendering quite nicely. Here we have Puddle Cam. And for some reason, I wanted to turn up the structure here a little bit to emphasize this manhole, but I don't think it's necessary. Let's take that back down to zero. Absolutely not necessary. We can see it's re-rendering here and nice and sharp through here and the background areas look fabulous. I like how this lens looks out of focus. We are at one eighth of a second handheld at F2 ISO 100. And to repeat, we're on the Nikon 40mm f2 coming out in about a week. How about that? We'll keep going here. And this is just a classic. You're traveling. You're going around the world. The sun's been set for half an hour or more. And you're out capturing your last few images. And you know that if you've got this lens, you can get a great image like this at ISO 100, one sixth of a second at f2. Doesn't that look good? Now here at this viewpoint, we're on a 5K screen here. Can we see chromatic aberration? Not really. If we really deep dive in and go to 200%, we can see a little bit of it here. And this is me not trying to correct it. If we jump in here and grab this thing, it does affect it a little bit. And as you can see, it's all but gone. And you can do even more if you want to. I have not removed purple fringing from any of these images and I've just shown you from this one here. So, I, I, look, I just think that is a great rendition. It's a classic sort of travel image. This is just a very classic sort of cityscape image. Not very excited about that, so let's keep moving. Ponyfish Island is rendering before our eyes and I just wanted to show here that it's nice and sharp here in the foreground. This is where the focus was. We're at 200%. So, of course, it's not going to look sharp at 200%. But let's just dial it back. And you can see just how good all of that is looking. Now, we do have, again, a very slight amount of chromatic aberration. But, of course, Ricci from Nikon UK has told us not to expect what we get out of an S-Class lens. But, again, it's less than half the price. Let's just do the defringing. And gosh, there's not very much of it left at that point in time. This is a very, very minor thing and we are pixel peeping. I think that's a great result. Another thing I've done here that might be of interest to you is I have engaged keystoning. So if you look at this building here, my camera is pointed above the horizon. So I am not level with the ground and thus buildings will bend over like so. See how they're leaning in? A little bit of keystoning very quickly fixes that. Do you like it? Let me know in the comments below. Here's the moon. Looking pretty good. Get in there. Sure, we can see some chromatic aberration. Let me defringe, deep purple fringe. And again, I think that's a pretty good render considering everything. This is some of the imagery that you've already seen shot from the scooter on the iPhone. I wasn't planning on shooting this way. I was planning on shooting with the Insta360, but it crashed and I didn't have time to fix it because of curfew. Uh, and I'm, I took this shot to show you just how, how creamy and lovely the background looks. This is 1 15th of a second at F2. And here we are under a bridge, very, very dark under this bridge and 1 8th of a second handheld. Again, very happy with these outcomes. 200% here, 100%. I mean, it's just... To be able to, like, it's almost pitch black under here. You can't tell in this image, of course, because I'm bringing, I'm amplifying the light by using various methods of shutter speed and aperture. I think it's just a great result. The fact that you can 
pull this off and get an image, a usable image. I mean, here it is again. I just think this is looking great. You're getting everything you want over here in the background at 100%. There it is at 100% rendered. That's perfectly sharp through there. And then have a look at this image. You can see here again at 100%, we've got the bridge. It's a bit soft and that's because the focus is here. And if you look at this banister through here, this is sharp. This is sharp. This is a versatile lens and so affordable. What's interesting about this one is there's two versions. There's one here at one eighth of a second and I've had to push it two and a half stops. So you can see a little bit of grain in the sky if we go up to 100%. And then there's this one here, which I shot at one second. You can see down here. And there's less grain because I haven't had to push it as far. What would you decide to do? Would you push or would you get, if we look here, we can see in this case at 100%, the one eighth of a second is sharp and the one second is not quite as sharp. Optically, color wise, color rendition, it looks very similar, but I love that you can get a very similar result and just basically you can choose the shutter speed that you want and the ISO that you want. Do I want grain or do I want it to have the, t the potential to be sharper. I think this is great. Now here's a one second exposure. Let's just push it a little bit further. Why don't we go up to two stops? It's very, very dark. This is a very, very dark situation. I think this is looking really good. I think though what I've observed is around the one second mark, we're probably pushing the in-body image stabilization to the limit. I was very cold. Uh, I could hardly feel the camera in my hands. My fingers were so cold because I was scooting around. That was making the wind over my fingers even more than it normally would be if walking. Wind chill factor was high. I wasn't wearing gloves. Not always that necessary here in Melbourne any time of the year. But I think, uh, I think the sweet spot for handheld is probably around half a second to quarter of a second. And this was a second. And it's slightly soft. Maybe if I'd kept trying, I might have gotten one. These images here, these are actually JPEGs. When you're in video mode and you press the shutter, you get a JPEG at the resolution of the video. So this is a 4K JPEG. And I just happen to like this shot. I didn't shoot it as a still, but I just really like it. Let's see, you know, how much control do we have over a JPEG? And it's always much more disappointing, obviously, than w working with a RAW file. I still like that, even in that messy, grainy, abstract look. This file here, vertical, handheld, one sixth of a second now. And if we go into 100%, because it's sharp, 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 even sharp here in the background now, this here is about 100 meters from the steps and then this chapel here is another 100 maybe more from here and it's all in focus even at f2 or in focus enough isn't that interesting handheld at one sixth of a second you would have no problem walking around a major city anywhere in the world and getting great shots handheld if you wanted this to be instead of a sixth of a second but one thirtieth of a second you could push your iso to 400 or 800 and get a similar result and being handheld at a 30th of a second or something like that. It just really is super versatile. One of these is probably my favorite image of the evening. We can come in here to 100% and see how the rain and the metal is rendered beautifully. And then I just really love this soft out of focus area in the background. Here we are at 1 30th of a second at F2. Now we saw these images earlier. This one here has been keystone corrected to make these verticals vertical. This is what it looks like without it. They're leaning in. But just look at the color and the sharpness. Again, handheld, one quarter of a second, F2. We've got detail here, probably something like 500 meters away. Looking great. This is 500 meters. This is maybe a kilometer and this is two kilometers. So things are Maybe not quite two kilometers, but a kilometer and a half. Of course, at F2, things are going to start to fall out of focus in the distance. Now, there was a lot of public works going on in the city because, of course, the city is empty. So I suppose it's logical. It's a good time to pull up roads and fix things. Here is a sign. We're at 100%. Beautiful and sharp. Textures here are sharp. Road is sharp. Everything's looking good. I like how the background is rendered nice and soft. Everything is under control there. This image is untouched, as we can see. This is one quarter of a second handheld at F2. Again, another road closure. Things looking lovely, one sixth of a second F2. 
and I love the colors and the textures here the foreground this is actually the light from the scooter I really like this composition the textures the colors everything that's going on and even at one sixth of a second we go into a hundred percent remember this is a 5k screen and we can just see how sharp all of this is very very sharp 200 percent well i suppose it's still sharp i don't really like looking at 200 percent. i don't think it shows us the real world and actually how you would ever see it or reproduce it but this is all looking good now in this image i'm getting the table here in focus so if we go into 100 percent we can see this is nice and sharp we are one sixth of a second handheld at f2 wide open and we can see the backgrounds looking lovely and soft now the, the light whatever lights they're using here i find it super hard to color balance and you go a bit more blue and this becomes too blue this starts to get a weird blue yellow color and the mixture of the multiple different white balances the mix of the mix of the multiple color temperatures that are in this environment are very hard to flatten out without doing basically a layered image possible to do but again what we can see here is the table in the foreground is in focus at 100 percent it looks fantastic and then we fall into the background out of focus lovely now this image here is towards the end i was rushing at this point because curfew i had about an hour to go before i had to be home we have a curfew i know let's not get political today about it it hasn't been a good day here in the city of melbourne but we can see this is nice and sharp handheld one third of a second at f2 these are stars i am not a astrophotographer but from the very limited things i do know I think these stars are looking pretty good for a lens that's wide open and it's handheld. There's 200% for you. So that's pretty impressive. Then in this image here, I was just showing long focus and then close up focus here. Again, nice rendering. This looks lovely and sharp here in the corners. I just think that looks great. I mean, here we are at 100%. And that's that's looking wonderful just to reiterate it's a 299 dollar lens that's a great result and here's an image looking back at the city at half a second f2 and i just think for half a second handheld this is rendered very nicely going to 100 percent the focus is around this area here that's looking great and here's this bridge which you've seen in a few videos of mine from another angle and again this is another half a second exposure and i just think you couldn't ask for anything more from a lens of this price i mean i think it's i actually think it's over delivering handheld f2 here we are at 100 percent sharp this is looking sharp this is looking sharp it's, it's just great you can see the half shutter speed over here people are blurry and the final image cityscape our very first look at the 40 millimeter f2 compact us 299 lens way more from me to come on this lens but more importantly i would love to know what you think what do you think about this lens what are you seeing so far are you thinking of getting yourself one i know from the poll lots of people are interested in getting one but tell me your thoughts now that you've seen some images all right everybody absolutely spectacular to see you if this is your first time here i would love to see you again so please do subscribe please share please like fantastic for this little old channel and uh yeah more important than anything get out there and make some art have some fun walk around enjoy the world and embrace the fact that we are alive. It's a pretty special thing. Okay, I'll catch you later.